Hey, it's George Chuang. I'm sure most of you know about the massive protests in Hong Kong right now. Now, this is a sensitive topic, therefore I thought it necessary to teach on it, because here is truth. The vast majority of Christians have worldviews that are not very Christian. In every country that I've been to, and this is true for every country, it doesn't matter where you go, the people of that country are very patriotic for their country. That's a fact wherever you go. Even if their country is impoverished or run by a corrupt government, the people are still patriotic and love their country because it's where they grew up. It's their home, their homeland. Mainland Chinese are patriotic for China. The Russians are patriotic for Russia. The Europeans are patriotic for their countries. Go down to South America and it's the same thing. Even those fleeing Latin America because of poverty or corruption will head to the US and then wave the flags of their country. Now you're thinking, but you fled your country. You ran away from it and now you're waving the flag of your country? You just ran away and fled that place. What are you thinking? And this mentality is often written in the heart of man. They have a love for their homeland. I didn't realize how patriotic I was until I was overseas and non-Americans started bashing on America. I found myself slightly offended. I felt they were attacking me because I was American. Yes, America has lots of sin, but it's done a lot of good too. If it weren't for the Americans in World War II, Asia would be speaking Japanese and Europe would be speaking German right now. Now, when Americans bash other Americans, that's fine because we're all American. It's like when black people bash other black people. Blacks don't get offended because they're all black. It's their circle. But when white people bash black people, blacks may get offended because it's not their circle. They weren't raised black, so they don't know what it's like. Now, you can make this circle smaller when you criticize family members. That's fine because it's family talk. But when outsiders start criticizing your siblings or parents, you may take offense because they are outside of your family and it's none of their business. So this circle starts small with your family and then it can expand to your community or your ethnicity and then it can get bigger to your country. And those outside the circle are usually viewed as outsiders. Now, what is the Christian perspective? Well, my citizenship is in heaven and that's the mentality all Christians should have. We are all one people. One nation. We are God's people. The nations of the earth have nothing to do with me. I'm just to be light and salt to the earth, the whole world. You don't need to be offended when people bash your country. I don't need to be offended if people insult America because my country is the kingdom of God. My king is the Lord Jesus. We are told in Philippians 3.20, for our citizenship is in heaven. Now this is what I have found. I'm going to use America as an example, but it's true for many Christians in all nations. Let's take the Christians living in America. A lot of Christians are American first, Christian second. It's like having dual citizenship but your American citizenship takes priority. It can be Mexico first, China first, Russia first. It's true for many Christians in all countries. Now, the Christians who are more Christ-focused have Jesus first and being American second. That is better, but I want to take you a step further. I want to take you back to the early church and back to the days of Jesus. I want you to be able to see yourself walking with Jesus, literally. See yourself walking and talking with Jesus about life, the world, countries, and all things. I personally don't think God wants you to have this dual citizenship mentality. 
Let me clarify. I'm not talking about a literal passport and citizenship. I'm talking about the culture and the things that influence your life. A lot of times it's tied to your citizenship. Your citizenship is often tied to the country you love and have a heart for. So I just used the word citizenship to refer to the things that have influence over your life. Now, I believe God wants you to have a heart that is just purely the kingdom of God. When I used to attend churches in the U.S., I noticed the majority of preachers and congregants will say, let's pray for our troops. Almost as if being in the military was a form of serving God. We want to pray for them because they're serving God. Well, they may not say it that way, but they say they're protecting America and giving their life so we can have freedom or something like that. Now, if Christians in America pray that way, should Christians in China, Russia, Europe, and so forth also pray that way? Should Christians in China and Russia pray for their troops and say, our soldiers are protecting our borders and our way of life? So let's pray for our troops. I'm certain there were a lot of Christians in Britain praying hard for the British troops as they were going to war with the colonies. Those colonies are in rebellion. Let's pray for our troops. Well, I hate to break it to you, but God may intend to kill all your troops, save the ones who flee, because God intends on creating a new nation called the United States of America. And throughout history, I'm sure Christians were praying for their troops without any knowledge of what God was doing. God has used countries such as France, Spain, Portugal, Britain, Germany, and many others to spread his word. But God has also pulled down and set up new governments in those countries. What am I getting at here? I'll make it plain and simple. You have been fed propaganda by your government and your own people. They want you to be patriotic because if you're not, the government crumbles. Every government needs just enough people or the right people, people with power and influence behind it to keep it going. Governments don't want a revolution or rebellion, so they find ways to unify the people and make them patriotic. War with another country always unifies the people. If the people are discontent with their government, the government just says, we are about to go to war with so-and-so. They are a threat. The people redirect their focus and unify against this foreign threat. This has been true since the history of man, and governments know this. It's not rocket science. Therefore, all governments want their people patriotic. So what is the Christian perspective on all this? Let me tell you, none of the apostles ever said, let us pray for the might of the Roman Empire and the prosperity of the nation. God bless and protect every Roman soldier. They could care less about which government was in power. In the time of Jesus, there were zealots for the Roman Empire, zealots for the Jewish state, and propaganda everywhere. But the apostles were kingdom of God focused. Now we are to pray for those who are in authority. First Timothy 2 verse 1. Therefore I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. It doesn't matter if a country is run by a king, an emperor, a dictator, a senate, or it's democratic. We are to pray for all who are in authority. Knowing this, Romans 13, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. 
Now, this is true because God is in control of everything, and he has his end time calendar all planned out. But it is also true that the angels and demons are at war, and there are powers and principalities over certain nations. Learn this lesson from Jesus, Matthew 17. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? Speaking of a demon. So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Now Jesus was talking about casting out demons. Then he relates it to removing mountains, if you have faith. Jesus isn't talking about landscaping. Prosperity gospel teachers may relate this to landscaping and speaking to your flower bed. But he links casting out demons to removing mountains. Now, mountains in the Bible are often symbolic of empires and kingdoms. I suppose you can also relate mountains to obstacles. So Jesus tells them, because of your unbelief, you could not cast it out. Then he ends with this little nugget, don't miss it. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. But wait, Jesus, you just told us we could not cast it out because of our unbelief. Then you tell us this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. So which is it? Is it faith that we need or prayer and fasting? And that's the nugget you don't want to miss. If you have faith, you will be living a life of prayer and fasting. If Jesus said this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting, and then Jesus was able to cast it out, what does that tell you? Jesus had been living a life of prayer and fasting. If you want faith that removes mountains, and it's only mustard seed faith, you will be doing these things. Now you say, George, I don't fast. Well, in Isaiah, the Lord speaks of a fast he has chosen. Isaiah 58, 6. Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Now you choose a fast that pleases the Lord. If you don't fast food, I have nothing against that. If you do, that's great. Just don't fast like the Pharisees. You only go hungry and end up being self-righteous. No one is impressed and God is not pleased. But fulfill your calling. If you're serving God full time, that is, you're in the ministry, then you really should be practicing these things, fasting and praying. Be ready in season and out of season. If you're a bus driver or a pilot or something, yeah, I don't think you should be fasting on the job. Bad idea. Jesus taught this same lesson about removing mountains four chapters later in Matthew 21. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How did the fig tree wither away so soon? So Jesus answered and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. So a fig tree withered at the Lord's command. And he tells us mountains can be removed also. Strongholds, obstacles, empires can come crashing down if you pray with faith. And earlier, we just learned that if you have faith, you will be praying and fasting. So I believe prayer can set certain nations free from the devil. Maybe North Korea would not exist had the church prayed harder. I don't know. Maybe God has something else planned. Concerning China, when early missionaries shared the gospel, the Chinese were not responding. Very, very little fruit. Instead, many missionaries were killed and viewed as foreign devils. So what did God do? 
I believe he may have purposely raised up the Communist Party because they did a pretty good job at removing all their traditions and belief systems. The Communists left a huge spiritual vacuum in the country, and the people started responding to Jesus and the Gospel. So much so that Christianity is now a threat to them. That's how much it's grown. But if you've been to China, you know it's like Nineveh. The sin of the place is great. It's a people that don't believe in God and don't fear God. Swindlers and con artists everywhere. No one keeps their word. When you arrive in China and you make a friend, the first thing they'll tell you is be careful. People here will try to trick you and swindle you. And if you do get swindled, don't be surprised it was that really nice friend who told you to be careful. If you get hit by a car, watch out because the driver may see you're still alive and run you over to make sure you're dead. Dead people cost less than crippled people. So if you get hit by a car and you're in pretty bad shape, be careful. The driver may run you over again to make sure you're dead. The craziest stuff happens in China because lives are cheap and money talks. This is the society the communist government created. Now about the protests in Hong Kong. If I was a Hong Kong resident, I would be praying and obeying the authorities. However, you have to follow the convictions the Holy Spirit put in your heart while making sure it's not the propaganda you're being fed. We are called to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. That means we need to be active and promote Christian values. However, we also need to obey the authorities and live peaceably. There has to be a balance. Now, obeying the authorities only goes so far. If it contradicts what God wants us to do, then we have to be like Peter and say we ought to obey God rather than men. The youth in Hong Kong are heavily fed democracy. I'm American and I enjoy the freedoms of democracy. But Jesus did not send me to preach democracy. In fact, I preach the coming of a God who will rule the world with a rod of iron. Democracy can end up being what the Bible says in Judges. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Everyone agree what we're doing is right? Say I. I. Oh good, this is now our law. This is truth. And if you are from the West, like I am, you're not going to like this. But if the people corrupt themselves, sometimes you need a good king like Josiah to rise up overthrow and undo what the people are doing. That sounds absolutely terrible in a democratic society, but it's true. It's why nations crumble and some are destroyed. God overthrows them and sets up something new. If you're not up to date about why there are protests in Hong Kong, let me catch you up. They wanted to pass a law that would allow extradition of people in Hong Kong to be tried in mainland China. Why is this important? Well, in mainland China, the government controls the courts. They can make up any charges they want and put you away. However, in Hong Kong, there's due process. You get a fair trial. So for example, I could go to China and they could arrest me. Why? because I preach about Jesus who's coming to rule the world. I could be found guilty of trying to subvert state power. You teach Jesus, we'll overthrow the Chinese government. You're under arrest. Now in Hong Kong, I can't be arrested because there's freedom of speech. But the Chinese government is trying to make it so anyone can be arrested and extradited to China for trial. Now for someone like me, they're more likely to arrest me while I'm in China than in Hong Kong, so it doesn't matter. But for those living in Hong Kong, they don't want this new law. In 2015, five booksellers who sell gossip on political figures in China and China politics disappeared and later all five were found in mainland China. Basically they were kidnapped. 
One of them was allowed to return to Hong Kong, and he was supposed to return to China with a hard drive with all the names of all the bookstore's customers. Instead, he skipped bail and fled to Taiwan. And now he's in Taiwan, where there's freedom of speech and no extradition treaty with mainland China. So China is trying to control speech so people don't say negative things about the government. They want everyone to be patriotic and live in harmony. By the way, that's the goal of every world government. But what am I trying to get at? What is the purpose of this video? I want you to have your heart and mind set solely on the kingdom of God and Jesus. You can love your homeland, but don't get sidetracked by propaganda. If God should say, I set up the governments of Russia and China because I'm doing something, what is that to us? That's God's business. When you pray, you want to be in tune with the Lord. Imagine yourself walking with Jesus and talking with him when everyone else is running around saying, for the might of Rome and the glory of the empire and the prosperity of the nation. Sure, you may have Roman citizenship, but do you even care? Will you tangle yourself with empires and nations? Or will you be for the kingdom of God and have your citizenship in heaven only? You know, if you would rather fight for your country rather than the kingdom of God, I wouldn't be surprised if the Lord left you behind so you could fight for your country. Then when Jesus comes back, he'll take and overthrow your country, change its rules, laws, and government, and make it his. Then what will you have been fighting for? Well, you were fighting for democracy, or the Communist Party, or the government of Russia, or whatever. God is fully able to pull down governments and set up new ones as he pleases. Now, there's nothing wrong with loving your homeland. But you belong to the kingdom of God, and you are his people. Your loyalty and allegiance belong to him and him alone. And those who do the will of God are your brothers, your sisters, and your family. Now, if you signed up for the military because you need a job, I don't think God will hold it against you, but you will need to do your job. No, you may be sent to kill other Christians who also signed up for the military in their countries. Don't think you'll be rewarded in heaven because you're in the military. But if God called you to join the military, then do your job as a Christian and be a light. I don't like to view myself as American anymore. I, like Paul, may use my earthly citizenship for God's purposes, but it's not where my heart is. I just view myself as a citizen of heaven and one who is of the kingdom of God. And whatever country I visit, I find my true brothers and sisters are those who do the will of God. If you side with your nation more than the kingdom of God, then you might find yourself going to war with another country and having to kill Christians there. I just want the Lord to come and set up his kingdom. That's what matters most. I hope this video and teaching made sense because it's a very difficult topic to teach on. But you should be on the side of the Lord Jesus and not any world government. God sets up kingdoms and empires and then he judges them and tears them down. Be on the side of the Lord and don't be influenced by the media or government propaganda. Beloved, let us not be of this world. God bless you. If there are Christian policemen trying to keep order and do their job, and Christian protesters clashing with police, what would the Lord say about your actions? Christians fighting with Christians over things of the world. Let us be 
kingdom of God minded and let the world be about their own business. If the Lord is indeed raising up a spirit of protest in Hong Kong, then let the non-believers be about their business. But let his people live peaceably, praying for the authorities and subject to the laws of the land. You, God, are the Lord of all creation. Rise up in these last days and save many a life. We wait on you, for you are our only hope. You alone can turn the tide of the battle. Let your people fall madly in love with your Son, Jesus Christ, and let us be about your business, O God, for we are not of this world. Amen.